Today what I'm going to be doing is going through a quick pen and wash sketch that I've done of the Hermitage Museum. This is in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's the second largest art museum in the world. It's absolutely beautiful. I went there last year as part of my trip. This is actually the entrance to the Winter Palace and one of the places where the Russian royalty of the day resided. So the scene here, I put a lot of focus on the actual carriage itself and the front and the horse and I've added a few figures but mainly in this part of the palace entrance here I've added more details the other bits I've just quickly added in I don't want too much focus there so we'll see how we go and the windows are actually a little bit more complicated than that what I've done is that I've just tried to go through with the small pigment liner and add it in windows like this so just little squares color them in you know I haven't done these ones you don't have to follow the reference picture exactly as I always sort of say in my other videos but you know there's just a good reference you can even do things like you know make them smaller for smaller openings here for example and same goes up here no one's really gonna notice so let's get started and mainly today I'm going to be using some of these flat brushes to get in most of the detail I'm also going to be using a smaller round brush again this is a number four round brush and that's mainly for just some of these smaller details so what I'm going to do I'm just going to get started in the sky area I think that's probably the easiest place to start off and I'm going to go with a cerulean blue. So I'm just finding an area of the palette that might be a bit more emptier. So it's here in the corner. Just get enough, oops, just get enough onto the palette. So that will cover that sky wash. Give that a try. That's a little bit dark. So we'll just lighten that a little. And work our way across so we'll do that from the top section first this and just move downwards and remembering to also cut around this flag so just around this area here and we'll go down just add some more water into that mix to dilute it as well put it down here. I'm using only one flat brush but if you feel you need to swap to a smaller brush definitely go ahead and do that. Okay and you know I'm just gonna reduce the water on that as much as I can down the bottom and do a little bit of cutting around these little statues and things on the roof but I'm not uh, being too careful there, but you just try your best to cut around them. And do this one as well. Like that. Quite loosely. If you've got little bits of white there, it's also no big deal. Okay. Almost done. All right, so that's the sky taken care of. One thing you can do as well, just keep the page on a bit of a slide. So I'm just gonna add this little packet of pens underneath. That will help the water to run downwards. Little, not 100% necessary though. I'm gonna be mixing up a little bit of Naples yellow into this blue, this cerulean blue. And what I'm trying to do is create a turquoise kind of color. As the front of the building has a lot of this turquoise color in there. So mixing all that in to the blue. So I've got this kind of greenish color. And smaller flat brush. Again, I'm just gonna go through and indicate the colors so that basically around the windows and the pillars 
So let's start around here. It's too strong. And I might actually go with this round brush. It'd be easier for me to do this. And again, just try to be fairly loose. Main thing is just remember to cut around those pillars. Still think it's a bit too dark. So I'm just adding some more yellow in there and see if I can shift this color around a little bit as well. There's a bit of green up here and here. Right. Let's move that around here and over here. Okay, here as well. And this bit here. Remembering just to leave some white. Okay. So, you know, just looking at the reference picture generally and using that as a guide to know where to cut around. You know, I haven't even got the pillars in exactly. It's close enough and, you know, at the end of the day, you just want to get an impression. So, more cutting around here, the windows. Underneath, like that. Okay. There, and now just doing a little bit of the bottom part here. Very rough indications like that. This part now, left side. Looking further down again, bringing this green, greenish color further down. One thing to remember when you're drawing this is again just simplifying a lot of these windows down and in, into basic shapes. So, you know, looking at these kind of arches uh, in the windows, and you've got this, you know, rectangle, you've got these triangles and semicircle areas on the windows as well and this one's kind of like a rectangle a lot of them are just kind of a rectangular shape they're rounded off at the top simplify them down into those shapes and look at things like you know count how many windows there there are um, look at about roughly where the midsection of the building is as well that's going to help you to I guess, determine where the windows fall, whether, whether they're in the top or the bottom section of the building, that kind of thing. Okay, so we'll do this bit quickly. That. And you know the colors are not a hundred percent matching in some areas, though I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to try to get them to blend a bit together and just reinstate some areas too. Go back into it again when you're. Using light washers, this is easy to do. 
just to keep adding bit by bit a little bit more detail in the building. Okay. So a little bit of warmth in the windows now, just in the arches and surrounding areas of the windows. So I've got a bit of yellow ochre and you know, I'm just going to add that into the pillars as well. Just to indicate some areas here, the ornamental areas there. This is some here as well, which I'm going to colour it over, but that'll have to do. Just being pretty loose with this. Just kind of gets in. It's just a bit of warmth on top of the windows. That. Okay. And these arches here, it's actually quite dark on the inside. I'm going to add a bit of this grey, grey down purple on the inside to darken it up here. I'll probably go over it again later on. that okay and this side this yeah let's see where else I think I'll leave that for now and well I can I'm just gonna get in the flag let's get it let's get it over and done with so very bright red. I'm picking up some pyrrole red and um, just look at the color. So the bottom of it in like this. There we go. Stronger, just adding some pigment in there, and I'll let that dry because I want that separation between the red and the blue later on. And we'll just grey down the top section of the flag. I'm just having a look now. Let's get in just a bit of warmth for these top areas. So I'm using some burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna. And maybe some yellow ochre mixed into that. Yeah. And we're getting some of these little statues. Let's do it all at once. That here. Go around and this top section here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty quick with this. All right. And I actually want to add in a darker color. Just mixing up the grey that's on the palette, general dark colour, and I'm going to add some darkness underneath this section of the roof here, just where the shadow is indicating that the light source is coming directly above. Right. So that's done, and now we'll do just a little bit here, tiny bit here, and 
just an indication like that. Probably have to darken this section as well a bit more later. Let me just get through this first. Okay. Put a bit of sap green in the back here. Indicate some trees and things here in the courtyard. And mix in some of this colour here. Let that do its thing. Same thing goes for the other side. A bit of green. I'm just going to leave that a little red maybe at the bottom here. Here as well. All right, so with the windows, thinking I might actually get in a sort of darker wash in there, uh, but I might actually go in with some cerulean first. Let's give this one a try. Okay. I know they're not this color in the actual reference photo, but I just wanted to put it in to see what it looked like. All right. The rest of these windows, I'm just going to leave white. But um, I think this can be a nice little color that we have flowing through. You, know, you can even gray it down if you want to pick up a bit of this red and mark on the palette just uh, you know, do this kind of thing, add it into the windows. That will dull it down a little bit for you. Okay. I think that top window is done now so I'm going to add in a little bit of blue just so some cobalt blue that I've mixed up. It has to be darker, a little bit darker than the sky wash. There we go. Just get it in like that. And um, you know, thinking now just might go in with this turquoisey color again to reinforce some areas a bit more. It's the good thing, like I said before, with painting a little bit lighter. It's easier to go from light to dark harder the other way around. Okay, I might leave the background for now. I'll go back into it if I need to later on. I'm gonna start working on some of this stuff here in the foreground. So, I'm trying to get this carriage in a darker color. Um, Let's have a look. So maybe just a little bit of yellow ochre for a bit of Naples yellow for this area of the carriage here. Little curtains at the top. What else have we got? A bit of yellow ochre here as well. Uh, for the seat, it's kind of a gold color seat, like that. And there's even little lights here as well, little lamps, and a bit here, some of the ornamental areas around the window.
that. And the chair as well. This. Okay. okay. For the horse, I'm just going to grey some areas down and mainly add the shadow coming across here and the legs back just leaving a little bit of light on the top of the horse so the light may be coming from around the top left hand corner okay Let's go into this carriage now. Got some raw umber and maybe a bit of sepia. And this needs to be pretty dark. that okay and uh, notice I'm holding the brush further down to get that precision dark but um, the good thing is that the pen I put in a lot of that detail already in the pen so what I'm gonna do is just reinforce that a bit more yeah, mainly the, the actual uh, outside of the wheel like that you can always go over it later too if it's not enough okay insides of the window need to be darker so mixing up more paint to darken up this inner area that get it in this okay and there's some other areas here which are darker too on the carriage which I'll just imply like that. Then you've got these areas here leading up to the horse, again, which I've already got in with the pen. But what I can do is just uh, outline them a little bit more, thinking that I missed anything out, but really. Just an impression. So figure standing behind the horse. So I'll get that figure in like this. kind of dark shirt and we've got this one coming in let's go with the warmer color bit of yellow ochre in there and dull that down to a reddish sort of dark color down the bottom like that The head's in, a little bit of red there, 
and we'll go for these figures too on the right hand side some yellow ochre like that and darken the legs because they come down this one's just kind of together oops like that Okay, getting there. A bit more darkness in here. these areas yeah as well just again reinforcing some shadows being cast from above the light source above That. You can also use this to define the pillars a little bit as well while you're at it. Try not to overdo it. Notice actually this area on the top uh, here. Is, this has little bits of teal running through it, so I'm just going to imply that. that. Okay, I think it's time to do the foreground. So for the foreground, I'm going to pick up a little bit of gray. Just mix that up on the palette like that and get that in all at once. Um, this is gonna be a bit tricky cutting around some of these figures, but we'll make do. Uh, I'm going to actually add a bit of yellow ochre in here as well. Like that. To warm things down a little. Just a bit of yellow ochre. Bring it across the ground. So let's get that all in first. I've gone over this carriage too much. There we go. Comes up about to here and uh, goes down to here. What you can do as well near the bottom is just add in some more darker colors like this as well. A little bit of darkness in the foreground. And that should pretty much do it. Just strengthening that area up here as well. Near where it finishes off at the base of that building. Okay. It's looking okay. 
I'm gonna wait for this to dry for a second. And while that's happening, I will go through and see if I can add, you know, touch up little areas where I want to add a bit more of a shadow, that kind of thing. All right, so maybe underneath here. Yeah, the clock. Pretty dark, so I'm gonna get that in. That. Bit of darkness in there. darkness in here that you can always do this with the pen as well Force these pillars a bit more. Mainly in the middle section of this painting, because I want this to be. The focus here, the outsides here, you can just go a bit, little bit lighter. That. Okay. It's almost dried. Now I want to darken the carriage a bit more too. So let's get some more of that brown running through. This is just a burnt umber. That's actually the head of the horse there, which I've implied this too. Let's have a look what we can do. Maybe just to Oops, too much. Look at that grey underneath here. That. And some quick finishing touches. What I'm going to do now is mix up a dark color, it's a bit of brown and a bit of blue and I'm going to get some of the shadows in, assuming the light source is coming from just above this, the horse as well, 
Just using a flat brush. And underneath the figures, a bit of a shadow too. Here, one under this one. It's going to be a good point time to also strengthen her legs. Here is the legs a bit more so we join onto the shadow. Right. Hair on those guys, and maybe some birds. The finishing touch. Okay, and I'll say that's done. A little sketch. Check out these tutorials down the side here. I've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors.